Hi guys, Gary here and welcome back to another channel. I think I'm on a bit on a tilt here, but anyway, see you in a sec. Right, today we're going to attempt to um, install a, an aftermarket camera on the back of the Cougar. Um, I don't think there's a full comprehensive guide to do it, so I'll try and go in as depth, much depth as I can, and I'm capable of, so let me look at the tailgate first. But obviously, I want to put it in there. The camera I've got has got a little um, drill bit with it and a pilot old thing, so I'll try and drill in there, but I think once we've removed the trim, I think there's uh, four 10 mil bolts up in there, but <coughs> I'll put the camera back and um, crack on. I'll also share a few of the bits that we'll be using. So, I've got my lead, camera wire, camera an assortment of um, trim removal tools and that's the box uh, camera coming I think it's under a tenner and I have gone ahead and taken off this handle cover which is up in there and there's two Phillips screws I'm going to remove but that's in a sec and now we're going to try and uh, Remove the trim using one of these. <clears throat> nice, so that was easy. I've had I have had it off before because I did the reverse cam uh, reverse LEDs bulbs. <clears throat> well, I took this bit off. I may try with this first actually. Again. come off relatively easy but bear in mind I've had it off before. Place that away. Now our attempt to pull these off. Live on camera. Thought I broke it, but I haven't. <laughs> it snips off. And there we go. Trim off. Next up, there's four 10 mil bolts, nuts, <laughs> they have to be removed. So that's the placement. Two, three, four. So I'll get on and remove them now. Right, bolts undone. So, should. theory. 
them. do is drill the hole in there and obviously the wires are gonna have to be fed through here so probably what I'm gonna have to do is maybe make a little incision in that bit there to get the lead for the <clears throat> or the camera wires in there so back in a sec I'm gonna get me drill and bits right after a lot of messing around I am. Um, you see it there. I've got it in. Shout over the wife for shouting at the kid. Um, but yeah, I did it a bit too close, so I had to drill away a little bit inside there. But anyway, it's in now. It's secure. Um, I took my number plates around off as well, but I did with a good D-mount. Look at the state of it. But that's a job for later on. So anyway, right. So he's in. So next bit is to feed the bars in for that grommet that I've removed which I shall make a little slice and um, try and push a wire through. Okay, instead of having to slice anything, the little grommet, I haven't, I just uh, pushed it in underneath, so that's it, and got to cut nothing. So there you go, so this bit, in theory now, can go um, get bolted back in, which I would do, see you in a sec. Right, so next part, what I'm gonna do, I've just removed the 10 mil nut from there just for the rear light so what we'll do is remove the <clears throat> rear light and um try and find which uh is the live and the negative so obviously when the reverse camera oh sorry bleh, when you put it in reverse the reverse lights come on we'll take the live feed off of that for the camera because well i don't want to switch so you can turn it on when you want i want it just reversing that's it simple so i'll get the rear light out and um we'll have a look Right, <laughs> after much messing around, um, I've got a live in and out, I took off the reverse light, I want to see the wire and there's only two wires to the reverse bulb and that's it, <laughs> one's live, one's on earth. So live and earth coming off of that. The wires are tucked up here. I've not done it perfect yet, but what I'm gonna do is trill this wire around here. Once that's done, I'm gonna feed it through and then it's gonna come up, I'm gonna this, well, this it, pull this out and try and thread it through and um i'll be back in a minute you can have a look all right as you can see i've unclipped them both and there is the rca lead there just pulled the trim here and eventually i'm going to shove it in through there and then take off this trim etc and thread it through all right guys so i've had to have a couldn't do it all last night or yesterday so carried on today but anyway this morning as you can see i've placed the uh, well you can't but the wire is behind here i sort of pushed it behind here i managed to get my hand in and i've taken the easy option sort of pulled the rca lead out here and i've run it all along so I've got through there through there <clears throat> through here you can't see it Need to hoover underneath the trim panel here or through here. There's a little bit protruding there, but and then out here we are. So what I'm gonna do next, I think I'm gonna take off the um glove box. I think just to make it a little bit easier. Um although looking at it I might be able to shove it up. <laughs> oh, two seconds I'm gonna have a look. On second thoughts, it's going to be easier to remove. I think there's three T25s on here, on there, on here. I think there's a couple more. Yeah, there is. Down in the bottom there, each side, but we'll get to that in a minute. You also have to remove the, um, the trim. Just pull this piece out and plastic trim removal tool. You can also see where I've earthed my arm. <laughs> My dash cam in there, but there you go. 
So I've undone the three bolts there. There's a further two underneath. After removing the felt panel there. Um, yeah, that's one there. And I can feel another one there. Back in a bit. Right, finally off. Takes a bit of yanking, believe me, but <laughs> not, I don't need to disconnect it. But what I will do next is um, up in there, fuse F67, which is for the head unit, for the sink unit. So I will pull that fuse now. Right, next thing, I've disconnected a fuse, so is to remove this little grill. Thought I'd try that, but that's not gonna work. Little screwdriver. That's not gonna work. When I find something suitable, I'll come back. Finally got it up. Well, got it out. I had to use a steak knife. It's the longest or thinnest thing I could use. But anyway, he's out. I've got, I'm not too sure if they're T25. Yeah, the T25. So next off is to remove them. Right, got that up. You just have to give it a pretty good wallet. Then the next thing is to remove this electrical connector. Also, there's a piece of trim here which you take off. And next on to remove and undo is the two T25s either side there. Next thing is to use a trim removal tool and prise up the control panel. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and try that. That's it, prized up. And again, it's a connector there that we have to disconnect. So I'll get on and do that. Okay, well, <clears throat> I can't really disconnect that, so I'm not going to force it so at the moment. <coughs> Sorry about the cough. I'm going to uh, leave that in place because, uh, as you can see, I can gain access to the screen and behind there in a minute. So again, there's, it looks like four T25s, so I'm going to remove them. There we go, the four screws removed, just pull it forward. So this is what we want to gain access to, this clip here. So what I'll do, <clears throat> I'll clip it off, I'll get the new wire and then um, put it in place. So it's a case of just putting the new one in there onto the original forward wiring there. And now we have the RCA. Only problem I have run into is that the um, RCA lead with a kit um, <clears throat> is under there, it's not long enough, but I do have an RCA adapter. Like in, I've got an RCA from inside. Um, like from and then a little an extension joiner thing which I'm going to put in place um, so it reaches so I'm going to try that in a second right as you can see it would be long enough but the wire be see too tight under here with the glove box so what I've got is a home phono lead and this is like a an extender, so what I'm gonna do is pop that onto there, pop that onto the black, and then that's me that gives me another meter of uh, wire. So now I'll go back back to the yellow and um hopefully that should be it. As simple as that, but we'll see. Right, nearly all back together. Um I just started the engine. And just put it in reverse just to check. <laughs> so nothing, the uh, rear detectors are obviously on. But now I've got to um, plug in four scan and uh, activate it via that. So I'll um, get my laptop and um, hopefully now I've put everything back together, as you can see, <laughs> I haven't made no boo-boos and hopefully it'll work. But um, I've left the top grill out off up there just in case. So once I grab the laptop, I'll be back guys, cheers. Right guys, right we're into full scan now. It will do its checks and scans. After a few seconds, it's not the quickest computers. 
got a few error codes, but I'm aware of them. And apparently, I've been in contact because I bought the I bought the um, ABD reader from um, Tunnel Rats, but apparently the adapter is not recommended for this car. Full scan functions may not be available or not work properly. Apparently, that's because this is the latest version of full scan, and they just want you to spend sixty pound on their version. Right now, it's telling me to please set HMMS scan switch to the can. That's on the OBD reader, so I'll just turn it across and click OK. Now it's finished doing checks. So, I need to go here. And we need to click the APIM. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just coughing me glass out, but um, I don't know if you can actually see that, guys. Uh, maybe I'll just. Move. Right, so we need to go to APIM as built. So, this one. Now I believe it's click play. Please the MS, blah, blah, blah. So I'll just switch it the other way. <laughs> Okay. Center is potentially not safe, incorrect, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it gives you the warnings. So right, now this is what we're looking for. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna save it. Click save all. File name, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna click that because that's the only thing we're gonna save. So just in case of any false errors. So now we need to go to <coughs> I'm just reading off 70101 at the top. Change back 70101 to 0101. So I think it's 0101. The first block there, the zero, needs to be a B with camera. PDC. So I'll take that, delete it, plug B, and then write all. Then just build a row, but maybe I can change it around. Fine, that's just from. I'll click yes. Yep. Service procedure has been interrupted. That's not good. We'll come back to it. All right, hi guys. Um, it's a couple of days now after I've done my um, when you've seen the video of me doing um, full scan. Um, the, the actual issue was I didn't have the ignition on, but um, yeah, I'm a muppet. So right, it's, it's a nice, wet, horrible morning, but I'm just gonna show you that it does work. So what I did was right, so the procedure via full scan, which by the way, thanks to Andrew, who I asked and confirmed, um, will work for both sync two and sync three, okay? So what I'll do, I'll just um, turn the ignition on and well, I'll start the car up and uh, I'll turn it around, you can have a look. So there it is standard. I don't want to get done for copyright music. Um, put it in reverse. And there we go. So it works. Um, I could just show you what it actually looks like now. Um, back in the car. Let's drive. You can have a look. There you go. Let me need number plates on. You can hardly see it. There. Yeah. So I think for the actual cost, what it actually cost, it was, I think, it was, yeah, tenner for the camera, eight fifty for the lead. I can put the links if you want me to um, down below in the comment section or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll go away and upload this now and um, 
get it on up for you. So anyway, if you like, if you like it, <laughs> give us a like. Um, if you want to share it, that'd be great. And if you want to subscribe, even better. Anyway, stay safe, guys. I hope you found this video useful, and um, I'll see you soon. Cheers.